So, tell me your name again. My name's Cliff. Cliff. Family? Uh, yeah, I have a few brothers and you know, they're scattered out everywhere. And How many? Uh, well, there was uh, me and five brothers and a sister. Ooh. One of my brothers, he passed away. That's a big family. How'd your brother pass away? Uh, well, actually, we just kind of found him in his yard. And, and, you know, sugar died. He had sugar for a couple of years. So uh, he was 54 years old. So, who found? Did you find him? No, actually, uh, my boy did, my son. Oh, that had to be hard. Huh? Mm -hmm. How old was he? Uh, he was about 17 or 18 when he found him. Oh, uh, my brother was 54. Wow, that's young. So, was he older than you? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, my mom was 54 years old too, and she passed away. Really? And you know, I had a cousin I thought about, I don't know, about two years ago. He was 54. Well, how old are you? Me, I'm about 56. Oh. Phew. <laughs> yeah, I was worried about that 54 when it came through. There, I, yeah. bet <laughs> yeah. I bet you were. I bet you were. Wow. Recently, had another cousin pass away. He was 57. Hmm. Wow. What about I, your dad? Well, my dad actually, see, in my family, for seven generations, you know, nobody really made it past 60 years old, except for two people. That was my one uncle and my dad. And my uncle made it to 74, which broke all the records. And everybody said, oh, he outlived everybody. But my dad, he made it a day and a half short of 80. Wow. So has he been gone for a little while? Uh, going on five years. Okay. You got friends here, right? Uh, I got acquaintances. No real friends? Uh, well, you know, that's one thing, you know, until the person really, well, I got one person that's pretty close to me, but, you know, most people, you know, I just prefer to call them things. Oh, really? Yeah. Did you have close friends growing up? Uh, yeah, I had a few, but, you know, basically, you know, they're dead and gone, you know. Mm -hmm. So what does friendship mean to you then? Sounds like you take friendship pretty seriously. If you once well, you get to the point that you're a friend to Cliff, you're a real friend. Well, huh? if you're a friend, then uh, ain't nothing in the world I wouldn't do for you. Hmm. But uh, you know, <clears throat> first you know, the friendship you, know, you kind of just develops. You know, you know, you know it takes time. Time and trust, and yeah. Well. You got one really good friend out there, you said? Uh, yeah, I got one pretty good friend, yeah. That's good. Everybody's got to have one, right? Yeah. But, uh, he's a younger fella. He was actually homeless there for a little while. No, was he? And uh, he's doing quite well for himself. Got his own place. Yeah. Met a girl, got married, got a oh. baby now. Wow. Yeah, that's the one time I'll be down here in a little bit. Yeah. So how about you? What's your future hold? Well, that there's a, for me, it's kind of a scary type thing, you know, I'm not really for sure. I'm kind of hoping for a miracle, basically, uh, you know, uh, uh, I want to, <coughs> you know, have my own place again, feel like a, a real human, you know, basically. Uh, you don't feel that way now? Oh, no, no. Most, you know, a lot of times, you know, living along the river, you're living in dirt, you feel all around you. Know, wild animals coming in and out and, you know, and it's colder down there than it is up here you know by about eight degrees or so wow and you know it gets to you and you, you know if you, if you build a fire you know you smell like smoke and stink and you know, people would you know. <laughs> but you know if because uh, you know it ain't really easy to uh, wash your clothes and stuff if you know you can't come up with money to do it you know right. um, part time job here and there you know it, that's good, you know, better than nothing. But, uh, need something real. Need something real. Hmm. So do you have a plan? Do you have a, you said you're hoping for a miracle. What, what would that miracle look like exactly? Well, I need me a place to a roof over my head and a car underneath of me so I can get me a job, get back and forth to work, those type things, you know, uh, get myself back on my feet. Hmm. Uh, that would be a miracle. That sounds like a miracle. Do you believe? Uh, do you believe in God? What are your religious beliefs like? Oh uh, yes, I do believe in God very strongly. Uh, always have, uh, especially the last few years. Uh, a lot's happened to me in my life. 
and everything. My wife, she passed away a few years ago. And you know, I'm just kind of glad she ain't out here to see all this, you know. But, you know, um, <clears throat> what can you say, you know? Uh, you can't stop death. Do you talk to God sometimes? Do you, do you tell him well, what pray, you need? Well, I and... pray to God constantly, uh, especially early. As soon as I wake up, I like to start my day out with a prayer. <clears throat> During the day, I pray who knows how many times. And, and before I go to sleep. You think he's listening? Yeah. He is. I promise you he is. I like to start my day that way too. Yeah, I see evidence of him all around. I mean, it's just, even when life is tough, and it is for all of us, even if you're not, you know, living by the river, life can be can be tough. Um, it's different, you know, my trials are different than your trials, but... Exactly, uh, trying to explain that same thing to a young fella here recently. It's all about him, all about him. You know, everything's happening to him. I said, well, look around you. Mm -hmm. It ain't only you, it's everybody. Everybody, that's right. And those trials, I've always felt like, you know, God gives us what we need to grow, and, and He knows what we can handle, and... and uh, it's like a customized test for each and every one of us, yeah. you know. You know, this test is just a little bit much for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so where do you think you'll be a year from today if you had to predict? Will, will you get your miracle this year? Uh, well, see, I, I, I can't really say a year from the day. I can't really say 25 minutes from now. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know what's going to happen. You know, any turn, any corner. You know, there's no... If, if you're at a certain place at a certain time, and that certain person's at that certain place at that certain time, you ever thought about that? Yeah. I like, yeah, I have. It's those spiritual, it's like a spiritual intersection that, you know, the Lord knows who's going to cross my path today. And and sometimes I think those, those intersections are actually pretty important to Him that we... Um, we see one another and we're kind to one another and you look like the kind of guy who's been kind to a lot of people in your life. Well, yeah, actually, uh, I've done a lot of good things, uh, but, you know, all them, you know, good things, uh, you know, uh, it was just something, just the way I am, I guess, you know. Uh, I get, I've had people tell me in my lifetime, oh, you give away too much, you did this, you did that. And now look where you at. Hmm. But, uh, you know, it crosses my mind once in a while. Maybe if I would have did this, or maybe if that person would have paid me the money they owed me, but, you know, life's life, and what's going to happen is going to happen. See, I believe everything happens for a reason, and God's got a purpose for every little detail and everything. You can wander off your path, but eventually, if God wants you on a certain path to be at a certain place, you're going to be there. I agree. I agree. Everything indeed happens for us. And you just keep doing that good, and it'll um, it'll come back to you. The Lord will. The Lord will take care of you. He never forgets. Never forgets us. I really believe that. And I think He's closer than we than we sometimes feel. You know, it's easy to feel alone in this world. There's a there's so much hate, and there's so much division, and there's. It's just so much bitterness in the world and it's easy to feel alone and like like maybe our father in heaven has has closed his eyes and has forgot where we are but i just i don't think that's ever true i think he's i think he's there we just have to do what you do every morning right we got to open our mouths and talk to him and, and he'll answer yep um you know certain points in times you know i can say that you know i, I pray as much or be as good guy as i should be you know i guess everybody has their moments well i can tell you one thing i can i can just tell from a few minutes with you that um the lord sure loves you and is is pleased with whatever little good you can do every day to bless somebody we all see uh, i've been known to uh scoop up uh, homeless people off the street and help them out. Like, see if the veterans that I can get on those, I can really take them right down here. This is a big building mm -hmm. they take care of. Mm -hmm. Got a place to live, everything. You know, I'll run to a, if somebody ain't a veteran. You know, 
sometimes I'll let them stay in my campground for a while. But, you know, uh, it all depends nowadays. You know, I'm kind of cautious because you know, I've run across a couple of bad acres out there that I thought, you know, I was doing a good thing. And you never know who you're going to end up with in your car, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. you got to be careful. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I could actually go a little further and tell you that something that happened to me, but it's kind of strange the whole thing was, and I ended up in the hospital over it. Uh, if you really want, you guys want to hear it for a split second about sure, a homeless person. Yeah. Okay, I helped this homeless guy out. You know, he seemed fine for about the first week. You know, back in the mountain stand, I throwed him a tent up, gave him sleeping bags and everything. Uh, he wandered off one day, come back drunk. And he's an kind of alcoholic with some kind of uh, mentally, uh, mental thing going on. And he stayed drunk on that one or whatever he drank right mm -hmm. that day for three days. Oh, wow. Uh, during that three days, uh, see, I had a van at that time, but, you know, barely ran. Mm -hmm. So I just, sometimes I'd save up money or somehow or another and have a toad here or there and pick it up. But he, he tried to bust the window out of the head. He pulled a knife on me twice, tried to stab me in the back. Wow. Uh, and I could go into more detail, man. It was pretty nasty the way he was. And wow. So, uh, the next day, I uh, ran into him down here. I avoided him. And he said, man, are we still friends? I said, yeah, we're still friends, man. You stand over there. I'll stand over here. I'll never turn my back on you again. <laughs> we're still friends. Well, that's quite a story. Wow. Well, it's been nice knowing you. You better get out here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>